humanity is wonderful, and humans are wonderful species. In the course of history, because of primitive tools that we have had, humans have had to spend a lot of their time in productive work, not necessarily creative work. But advancements in technology have gradually released people from those tedious jobs, the non-creative jobs. And in the future, there will be a lot of time available for people to be creative. So doing creative contribution is a very important mission in life. So why creativity? I established some fundamentals of why creativity is important, but more specifically, I believe creativity is the only way to make quantum leap in advancement of human civilization. It is really the basic necessity for survival of enterprises today. Productivity and efficiency is not enough. The world of science and technology is moving so fast that a firm cannot be too stagnant. If you're not dynamic in creating and innovating, you're not going to succeed. And in the future, creativity is going to be more and more important. We have to be mindful of this very specific ability that we have and try to capitalize on it. Make sure that our most uh, value time is spent on creative activities. Why is it not so? Why centuries pass and we get people like Da Vinci, like Einstein? Why isn't everybody like that? In my opinion, the fundamentals of a creative past is based on intention, passion, and vision. And when augmented by knowledge and imagination, these lead to creative contributions. So, what is intention? Intention is really that simple and honest devotion that once we embrace, it will provide a very strong source of support and energy without requiring much of our own effort. It's kind of automatic in a way. It's very important to acquire the right intention. In the way of analogy, you can think of intention as what is in the seed of a tree. The seed of a tree intends to become a tree. It could be in a dark corner for years, but it doesn't lose that intention. As soon as opportunities are there, food, nutrition, sunlight, it starts growing. Let's talk about the value system and how we could adopt a right value system that can serve as a good base for our intention that would be very conducive and supportive of creative living. In my opinion, there are two types of people. The first type are those that look outward. They look at opportunities and resources to grab. They are oriented towards maximizing what they have. They are oriented towards maximizing pleasure in the way of having stuff. And these include materials, positions, and so on. There are the other types of people who look inward. They understand that they have a limited time on this planet. And what they're mostly concerned about is what it is that they can do. 
in order to give something that provides opportunity and provides resources and makes a change in the direction of doing something worthwhile for the betterment of humanity, everyone, I believe, should contemplate first to decide to which one of these they belong. And maybe when they decide and they wholeheartedly commit to that decision, that would be the tipping point, the important tipping point in life. About vision, Helen Keller, the blind American visionary activist said, there are none so blind as those without vision. I tried to graphically demonstrate what a life without vision and with vision would look like. Of course, it's a very primitive presentation, but it may simplify the understanding of what vision is. A life without vision has days, each of which have a number of activities like this, more or less, every day, some mundane activities, without a grand picture of where we are going. In contrast, this is a life with vision. This is where we see a pattern ahead of us. We see ourselves as part of a dynamic that continues on long after we die, our physical body goes. We are concerned about our thought staying, our impact staying for generations to come. We see the possibility of becoming immortal by leaving influences that stay, knowing that there will be other people who will take our mind and carry it forward. This way we can propagate in others and never die. As Rumi said, oh brother, your only thought, the rest is just flesh and bone. Well, one of my biggest projects right now is construction on Moon and Mars using a variation of my technology. Well, I certainly know that most likely I'm not going to live long enough to see people actually living on Moon and Mars in the outposts that will be built, hopefully with my technology. But just knowing that I'm a part of that vision gives me a lot of satisfaction, a lot of energy. It really does not matter whether I'm there or not. What's important is that I can, if I can add my own little step to the sequence of the steps that are needed to make that reality, so indeed, the desire to make a lasting impact is a death-defying force that strongly promotes creativity. Passion was another component of this process. Luckily, everybody has got passion. Everybody likes something. And luckily, not everybody's passion is the same as the other. That's why humanity is so colorful. That's why we have so many creative people contributing in different domains. It is important that you find your passion and make sure that you only do things that are in line with your passion. Or change what you have to do such that your passion gets involved in it. Do it through your passion. And of course, education is important. 
Without education, anything that we dream about would be baseless. If we don't have the knowledge of what reality is, we would be just a dream weaver if we just imagine. So it is important that we know the facts about nature, about humanity, depending upon what your field of expertise it is. So right now the options are formal education. The characteristic of formal education is that it's similar for all. There is a set curriculum that everybody follows. It is very organized, of course, and it is disciplined through quizzes and exams and projects. And then we have the informal kind of education, which typically fulfills a specific need. Therefore, it is well absorbed. In formal education, we take these different classes without necessarily having set the motivation to learn the subject. You go from this class to another class to another class just because the curriculum says so. A lot of time, it's like drinking water when you're not thirsty. Of course, your system is not going to absorb it. The informal education is the one that is based on pursuit of knowledge, based on a need. So you already start something, and then you try to find out how to do it. And that's when you start looking around, asking, reading, and getting engaged in doing. The famous uh, American author, writer, Mark Twain, said, I've never let my school interfere with my education. <laughs> Imagination, another component, is of course very important. Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Well, we have to do things that help our imagination grow. We should not be afraid of imagining. We should make it a practice to give significance to everything that even looks insignificant. So the process starts with passion, engages passion, and therefore it has enthusiasm in it. Enthusiasm is what keeps you going, is the engine behind activity, tireless activity, joyful activity. It brings persistence. Without persistence, you cannot tolerate failures. Failures are the ones that give you the true education. As far as education is concerned, success means nothing. Because when you succeed, it simply means that you did something you knew how to do. Where is the gratification in that? But when you fail, it means that you had the courage of pushing yourself to the edge of your limits, to what you knew. You got into uncharted territories, and now you observe something that is brand new to you, and that's how you expand the territory of your knowledge. Failures are great, and you have to cherish them and learn from them. The byproduct of failure is serendipity. People may think that it's sheer luck that a lot of inventions or ideas have come up uh, in a serendipitous way. But the reality is that serendipity only happens to the seekers, the ones who have been going somewhere. They have had a purpose. There have been questions in their head and they found the answer serendipitously. 
Thousands of physicians had seen what Fleming saw in that culture dish. It was only Fleming who invented penicillin because of that observation. Why? Because he was in the war. He saw thousands of people dying of infection. For many years, he was after finding a cure. There was nobody's mind as curious and as thirsty about finding a solution as his. As far as enthusiasm is concerned, I really love this uh, quote by Einstein. We act as though comfort and luxury were the chief requirements of life, while in reality, all that it takes for us to be happy is something to be enthusiastic about. Every day when you wake up, you have to look forward to what you're supposed to do that day. You have to be enthusiastic about what you're about to do. And that, that day will be a happy day. If we have the right intention and have a vision that is established and engage our passion, we go through the path of enthusiasm. In pursuit of knowledge, we gain experiences a mixture of failures and successes. And of course, everything is augmented and driven by our imagination. And that's how creation happens. In the end, I would like to say, avoid rat race. That's the type one kind of people's activity. Don't compare yourself with anyone. You're very unique, the same as your fingerprint, which is very unique. Nobody else's is like yours. Your mind is even more unique. So don't try to copy others and don't waste your uniqueness. The trouble with rat race is that even if you win, you are a rat. Race alone against your own time. toward your grand vision with the aim of leaving a lasting legacy. Good luck.